Hi, I'm Dr. Raquel Garzon, and today I wanted to give a brief snippet about neuroscience of behavior, which is taken from my Neuroscience of Behavior Change program, just to give you a brief introduction, and then I'll add a few more videos later on this week to give you more information. So first, I just wanted to really quickly um, talk about, um, give an overview of behavior. And so um, I look at the brain, and I look at what creates behavior. And behavior is really just a reflection of our internal environment. Internal environment meaning brain, body, emotions, everything being taken in together. So the way that I look at that is that we have inputs coming in from our external environment and we have inputs coming in from our internal environment. Those are processed by the brain and then that results in our behavior. So a lot of times when we look at changing behavior, what we look at is actually just changing the output. We say, okay, I was doing this and now I want to do that. The problem is, is that you can't really change behavior or it's hard to change behavior sustainably if we don't change the inputs that actually create that resulting behavior. So that's why I like to look at the neuroscience of behavior. So I wanna talk a little bit about the inputs that are coming into the system. And what we tend to think about are senses. Uh, we think about five senses. We think about our sight and our hearing and smelling, tasting and touching as being our five main senses. And that is true, we have those senses, but I add additional senses to that. I generally talk about nine senses. So in addition to the traditional five, I talk about the uh, vestibular system, so that's more of the, the balance uh, piece of it. I talk about proprioception, so that's where we sense our body being in space. And then the two last ones are very important in terms of behavior. One is interoception, and that is internal sensations. Those might be hunger-related, pain-related, temperature, things along those lines, because those types of sensations are are giving us feedback in our brain and they do influence our behavior greatly. The last one that I wanna talk about is the enteric nervous system, which is our gut, uh, which is part of the neural system. The gut gives feedback back to the brain. Um, it's a two-way communication and what we're experiencing in the gut with through our neurotransmitters in the gut gives that information to the brain and therefore is involved with this notion of behavior. What's interesting about this is that it's not so much um, what the sense is sensing, but it's our interpretation of that. So even just with sight, it's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. It's not what you listen to, but it's what you hear. And internal sensations of hunger or pain um, may be interpreted differently by each person. So one of the things I tell people is you are the only one experiencing your senses the way that you do. So you may look at some things as being fact, but in truth, you're experiencing them differently than someone else who might be looking at, listening to, um, and maybe having a pain or having hunger sensations, but you're seeing it, feeling it differently than they are. So it's really important to understand that you are unique in your own experience um, and that others may not be experiencing the same thing, even under the same circumstances or situations. So that's partly what explains different people's behaviors. And then you take all of that with past experiences, memories, um, how we process emotion, all of those sorts of things, and that re those sorts of things, and that really influences the resulting behavior. So uh, that's just an introduction to the senses, what happens with that, uh, with all of these um, external sensations, internal sensations coming in, they're processed in the brain through the emotional part of the brain, the rational part of the brain, and then that results in our behavior. So in other videos later, I'm gonna talk about um, some of the um, different ways that we might process the senses that are coming in. But in this particular video, I just wanted to introduce the nine senses, make it very clear that we experience those senses very differently than someone else. And so just because you do something particular with hunger or you respond in a particular way to pain or temperature doesn't mean that other people can respond to it or um, feel those same things that you're feeling. And that makes each person um, extremely unique, which then creates the need for even more compassion and empathy and understanding of others. Um, so I look forward to getting back with you on some of the other parts of the neuroscience of behavior. Thank you.